Hi, my name is Phil Burns and I'm recovering up. Wait a minute. It's the wrong day for the meeting. Actually, I'm not an alcoholic because alcoholics go to meetings. I'm a drunk. And I really can't drink that much because a year ago last Friday I was treated for prostate cancer. And unlike Tony Stark, who has a nuclear reactor in his chest, I have one in my prostate. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Um, but yeah, I was treated last year, and uh, I went through a pretty tough time two weeks after I had the treatment done. I uh, ended up with a catheter because I couldn't go to the bathroom. That stuck in for two months, and because the weather was warm when I had it done, I guess you could have made some money selling warm lemonade on a corner. <laughs> I guess not. <laughs> Uh, my radiologist told me I might have some negative side effects in the procedure. Then I didn't forget to tell me about the catheter. Uh, one of the other ones was that I might grow another penis. But then I thought to myself, how could that be a negative side effect? I could get a blowjob and hand job at the same time. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> uh, let me see. Anybody here ever been in the military? Yes. What branch? Navy. That doesn't count. <laughs> I'm like getting drunk. Uh, I was in the army. I was military police. Fuck you. And it's funny because once I graduated from MP school, which was in Fort Gordon, Georgia. Yes, that's I believe that's where they filmed Deliverance in Georgia. Uh, we were issued our own handcuffs. Now mine were all steel. Um, the they gave the Marines handcuffs covered in fur. Wrapped them for whatever. You know? So you kind of figured, okay, they're not going to use them to take in prisoners. <laughs> the SPs, which are not really MPs, they just give them a, a, a baton or a billy club. And I think I know what they do with them when they have somebody that's being an asshole that they have to take in. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, um, when you get a certain age, you have to go have certain medical tests done. When you get 40, you guys have to have a prostate exam. Anybody ever had one? Yep. No, no guys here have ever had a prostate exam. I'll be lucky. You know, you know how it's done. <laughs> they take their index finger, they put a glove on, put uh, some kind of gel on it, and stick it up your ass. Now, the thing about that test is when they do the test and they're examining it, make sure you don't see both of the doctor's hands on the table. Uh, the next one is when you hit 50, you have to have a colonoscopy. Anybody have one of those? No? You're lucky. You're lucky. So we're going to put a 30-foot tube up your ass with a camera big enough to be launched from the Hubble telescope. The last time I had one done, I woke up five minutes before the procedure was done. Yeah. I didn't know whether to punch my doctor or kiss him. So I'm from the north side of Chicago. Uh, someone else here was from the north side, too. Andrew? Yeah. North side? Up by Lincoln Square? Uh, now I'm uptown. Oh, you're in deep shit. <laughs> nice neighborhood. Um, but anyways, I'm on the north side, but I'm Saxon. I noticed there was someone here, someone here earlier wearing a Paul Canerco jersey, which is cool. I'm a big Saxon. Uh, every time I go by really Field, though, I know how Custer felt at Little Bighorn. <laughs> oh, come on, you know about your history? <laughs> Custer, a little big one, 20 troops surrounded by 10,000 screaming Indian, American Indians, in, or whatever they are, Native Americans. I don't know what to call people anymore. I mean, Indians, American Indians are Native Americans? No, they're not Native Americans. They actually came over from Asia, believe it or not. For thousands of years, this country had no people in it. Just feel just millions of buffalo. That's probably, and I guess some of them made it with chickens, that's where you got buffalo wings from. Uh, let me see, what else? What else? Oh, I'm looking Lydia. Oh, lucky notes. A lot of times I see women riding bikes in Chicago, and it looks good. I'm thinking about getting a bike myself. But whenever I see a woman riding a bike, the first thing that goes to my mind is 
the thing for the Wicked Witch of the West and the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> the thing that comes out of my mouth, though, is I ask her if she's making any money peddling her ass. <laughs> I've never gotten hit. I actually had someone else do that. I had a cigarette break and a job I had. He got slugged. And I bust out laughing. And he asked me why I was laughing. I told him, you asked and she hit you, not me. Um, so let me see what else. Oh, anyway, so anyways, I was telling you about the, the cat that I had. I noticed that now I'm home a lot during the day and I, I, know, I don't have cable. I have one of those uh, boxes that you can pick up air channels. I noticed there's a lot of catheter commercials coming out. <laughs> I'm serious. And, you know, they have catheters for women and, and they actually have one made out of glass. Okay, now, I don't know if I uh, forgot what movie it was, but someone talked about a catfish in South America where if a man goes swimming, it could swim up into his penis and his barbs go into the sides. So which would you rather have, that catfish stuck in your penis or a broken catheter? Yeah, I know, I know. I wouldn't want either one. They have a great little catheter. And those catheters, they are not fun to have. It's like shoving up. No, you can't. No, Patrick, you can't borrow a pencil. They're about the size of a pencil. And speaking of Patrick, uh, you said you were the poster that uh, you were modeling for this is the before picture? Yes, I was. I'm the after. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Not much difference, but. <laughs> um, let me see what else. Now, my son, it's this, this funny, my son used to go to um, Job Corps in Indiana years ago. And he got busted for having for being having a bowl with 0 .03 grams of weed. I don't know how much weed that is because I don't smoke often. Enough. <laughs> but he spent 18 hours in lockup. Came home to this day. He still will not eat, eat an egg salad sandwich. But anyways, we had to go, three months after he got busted. We had to go to court down there. And. Uh, we walked into the courtroom, and the bailiff said that anybody not involved with the case you have to wait outside. I was, okay, I went outside. Then I thought to myself, that's my kid, number one. Number two, don't tell me what to do, especially if you're not in Chicago. <laughs> so I went back in, I'm sitting all the way in the back, and when they called my son up, in the back of my mind, I want, I'm no. picturing him crawling up to the judge on his hands and knees, pleading, please don't lock me up with Bubba, please don't lock me up with Bubba. Bubba being a 390 pound, 6 foot 7 black badass. Um, and he wouldn't have cigarettes enough to appease Bubba's appetite. Not that way, anyways. Um, actually, he walked up very quickly, and what freaked me out. Does anybody remember Judge Paul Lander from CSI, the judge? This judge looked just like him. I was waiting for him to ask him for his birthday so we could kill him on that day. Uh, but anyways, he had to do, basically, uh, he, he, the prosecuting attorney made a deal with my son. So pay a small fine, which was three figures, and not get in trouble in Indiana for a year, for a year. Okay. Guess you paid the fine, being a good father. As soon as we walked out of the courthouse, my son turned and looked at me and says, I'm never fucking coming back to Indiana. <laughs> Actually, he did two years later to pick up his girlfriend, who now lives in the same house with me and my mother. And I wish she'd go, sometimes I wish she'd go back to Fort because she really doesn't do much. But, uh, and he's talking about weed. I wish they legalized it. I really do. I mean, you have less harm coming from people getting high smoking pot than drinking. Yes, sir. Right? I mean, people are too laid back smoking. The only things you have to worry about fighting about is what to get for the munchies. Chinese food, pizza, or ice cream. <laughs> now, if you're smart, you, get, you say fuck it and get off You say fuck it and get off three. They all say what? And another plus, you know how many people would get rich by buying stock in junk food? I mean, potato chips, Doritos, Popeye's chicken, McDonald's, uh, Pizza Hut, and 
all the others. It just, it just hits you sometimes how the, this country is so far. I mean, we've got how many states now are, have legal weed? Three or four? Something like that. And they're talking about legalized bullets. Might be legal in Illinois now, but there's only seven places you can get it, and the only one to travel is on the far south side. And who the hell wants to go on the far south side? I don't. I live on the north side. Um, I'm sorry, I have to have notes. I'm one of the oldest comedians in here, and I do forget myself sometimes. <laughs> um, I used to work in a call center. Anybody ever work in a call center? Great job, isn't it? What kind of call center? Really? Yeah. Telemarketing. That's not a call center. That's telemarketing. I'm talking about a call center where people would call in looking for jobs with companies. We have Fortune 500 companies like uh, Jenny Craig, Waste Man. I, I have more more screwed up phone calls with Waste Management. You know who Waste Management is, right? The trucking company, garbage trucks and all that. I had more screwed up calls for waste management, waste management jobs. I had one guy call up, he was in, from Florida, and I couldn't understand a word this guy was saying to me. I recognized the accent, I just couldn't figure out where it was from. And I called my supervisor over and I had her listen in, and she couldn't figure out what the hell he was saying. And I, I, knew, I, I knew I've heard the accent before, and I'm sitting there listening and thinking. Two days later I figured it out, it was Cajun. And if anybody's ever listened to occasion talk, you don't understand half the time. The second one, this guy called in from Canada looking for a truck driver's job. I got his name. I asked him where, where his address was. He asked his wife what his address was. Right there, I knew something was screwed up. So I, get, uh, I put put the address in the database. I asked him for his phone number. Again, he asked his wife. Then I had to ask him for his zip code. Well, they don't have zip codes. I've got postal codes up there, and it's not like ours where we have all numbers. There's the letters and numbers, and I think it's six characters. Again, he asked his wife what their postal code was. Who the hell's going to drive the truck? <laughs> Who? Now, I had this Mexican guy call in once looking. It wasn't a truck driver's job. It was working in a, uh, a landfill. Yes, they still have those, and they have voice management runs us. Anyways, I go through the whole script with this guy. Okay, got his name, no problem. Got his address, no problem. Phone number, blah, 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 no problems. We had to, I had to do the, ask him the EEO questions, which is gender, race, that. He told me it's a uh, race, Mexican. Uh, there was another one. Then I asked him what his gender was. He said Mexican. <laughs> no, what is your gender? Mexican. I didn't want to say, what the fuck sex are you? <laughs> Finally, I asked him, are you a man or a woman? He said, oh, I'm male. Okay. My dream interview. My dream interview working in this call center would be an interview where a guy calls, somebody calls up looking for a truck driver's job. Now I had women calling truck driver's jobs, but my, my dream interview <coughs> would be somebody calling up for a truck driver's job, goes through the whole script, aces it, and then they have uh, something to do with special needs, handicapped, or whatever. He would stop me and say, by the way, I'm legally blind. <laughs> now my question to him would be, what, is your fucking dog going to drive the truck? <laughs> this stuff is actually funny. I have got to laugh. This is not going to hurt. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I used to have relatives that lived out here, but they're all dead. Um, we got married couples in here. <laughs> there are people here. Uh, you know the thing about married couples is when they first get married, they're so intense on each other in all aspects of their life. It's great. 
Then after a while, he's having sex with his wife while thinking about the pretty blonde that lives three doors down the street. She's taking it, thinking about how she wished she could do the pool boy. Nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so years ago, I went to uh, my last wife. I've been married four times, three wives, four times. Wow. Life of punishment. A few years ago, my last wife's son went to Whitney Young's high school. Uh, I don't know if anybody's heard of it. One of the top baseball schools in Chicago. <clears throat> well, they were going on a, in a small tournament down in Springfield, Illinois. No, no, I'm sorry, Lincoln, Illinois. Well, we all went. We took our dog, our beetle with him. Beetle, our beetle was a little puppy. <clears throat> and um, the one thing we forgot to do was walk her before we left. That was a four hour drive down there. Well, the beetle started whining. The beetle was in the back of the van whining with the baseball players, whining and whimpering and blah, 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 this and the other. Well, finally, the only way she would calm down is by sitting on my lap. So I took her and, and I was holding her. And, she was calm. I had to look at my slit in my shirt. It was covered in crap, dog crap. The dog took a dump on me. Ah! Carmen's a bitch. The whole team was laughing about it when we got to the hotel. Okay? Which, hey, that's fine. The team also lost all four games after having big leads. Don't fucking make fun of me when a dog was an, has an accident on me. So, let me see. What's on that list? Okay, thanks. So, anybody, do you have zoos down here? What? Zoos. Yeah. Zoos. You know where they keep animals? I'm not talking about cows well, and chickens. Tim's in the end, the whole town is a fucking zoo. <laughs> <laughs> Zoos in Chicago. One is Patrick Baggins, Zoo, which is funnier than the comic. I love, that. I love it. The other one is Brookfield Zoo, which is in Brookfield, Illinois. You have to pay to get into that. Well, I, I always try to go at least once or twice a year to go to Lincoln Park Zoo. I love that zoo, like I said. The only thing I don't like about it is people don't understand a lot. Like, there's a paddock where they have the zebras, giraffes, those kind of animals, and some lady was walking her kid away from the paddock with his with her hand over the over her kid's eyes. I'm like, what the hell's going on? What happened? Well, I happened to look down, and I, I as for a second I thought this was a deformed zebra and it had five legs. It didn't. It had a boner. And it's well, it was almost as long as one of its legs. I couldn't believe it. But it, another thing that always happens is. When I go in some of the houses, just where they have the tortoises, whatever tortoises see me, they start fucking. I'm serious. I'm serious. This happened in Cleveland, too. In Cleveland, their zoo is two levels. They have the main level, where they have the tigers, polar bears, that kind of thing. Then you go up, they have the, the small monkey house, things like that. Well, my friend and I were walking through the small monkey house, and the first cage, there's a monkey with its back to the glass. And all you see is... <laughs> yeah. Both of us just kept watching. We go out and there's this like enclosure with two ginormous tortoises. And it was feeding time. So they put a bowl of fruit, fruit and vegetables down and one of the tortoises starts maybe 30 feet from where the two are sitting down or laying down, whatever. One of them gets halfway there. The other one, I didn't know tortoises can move as fast as they could with that heavy ass shell on their back. The second tortoise mounts the first one halfway to the food. I think they were, no, they're still moving toward the food and they were fucking. And all I hear was a splashing sound. And they, and I'm thinking about it. Did, was that the female coming or was that just the male getting his jocks off? So we got done up there and we're coming back. We had to go through the monkey house. We stopped by the first cage again. Well, lo and behold, there's a small monkey facing the glass spraying it with cum. <laughs> what the fuck? I mean, come on. Good thing there weren't bars there. Otherwise, people would get sprayed with everything. 
So I think my time is up. Yeah, okay, I'm done. Thank you very much. Hey, hey, hey.